Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So if you're new to the channel, check out the other content. We're a manual only machine shop. We do a lot of manual machining, some big stuff, some cool stuff. We do some railroad stuff. We do uh, um, the sawmill that I built here personally in the shop. And we got some other cool content like this, blowing up propane tanks. Now in the beginning of this video, I shot a propane tank. Well, I really did not. That was the magic of editing. I switched it out for an exploding target. Still a pretty cool intro. Um, but the age old question is, is how much pressure does it really take to blow one of these up? I've seen guys convert these to uh, air tanks and I just don't feel that's safe. So let's find out what it actually takes to pop one of these. So how are we gonna test these tanks? Well, we're gonna use this tool here. This is a hydrostatic test pump. This one is powered by a drill. It's a really nice little unit that's portable and I use it for testing my steam engine when um, I have my inspections and I also do several other engines as well for friends. So why do we do hydrostatic testing? Well, it's the safest way to pressure test any pressure vessel. A boiler is a pressure vessel. An air tank is a pressure vessel. Any vessel that holds pressure. If you put compressed air into it or a compressed gas, that gas compresses and then if something does rupture, it explodes. Whereas if we pressurize it 100% with water, that water doesn't expand, it just makes pressure, it keeps building pressure until if there's a leak, it'll leak. Where, so it's a far safer method of pressure testing a pressure vessel. So how do we do hydrostatic testing? Well, we fill these up completely with water so there's no air in them whatsoever. And then we hook the tank or the pump to it and pressurize it until it bursts or pressurize it to its max working pressure. Um, sometimes hydro testing is done to 125%. So we're gonna go way beyond that. We're gonna go right up to the 500 if these tanks will take it and we'll see what happens. So before we go out there, curiosity's got the best of me. I'm gonna do ultrasound test on these tanks just to see how thick the wall is. 97 thousandths, 95 thousandths. So we are under an eighth of an inch, which is 125,000. So I don't expect these are gonna take a lot of pressure to pop. And we'll put our test fitting in. Okay, so we're all set up. We've got multiple cameras on this. We'll just the pressure showing on the gauge right now is just my water pressure, my well pressure. We'll go ahead and turn the supply on to the to the tank. And I'm at a safe distance. And we'll go ahead and start making some pressure. There's 200 pounds right there. Or just a little shy. Crank my valve down here a little more. don't look like it's gonna pop. So maybe they actually are rated for that thousand PSI. Well, that's unfortunate. Now I'm gonna have to figure out a different way to blow it up. Well, that was extremely disappointing. I was expecting these things to pop at right around four to 500 pounds. Um, and surprisingly, my little pump actually hit 800. My camera I had on the gauge was just a horrible crappy camera and it's like 34, 33 degrees outside, so it's just miserable. Um, and I had a couple of other cameras fail from the cold, surprisingly. All the setup I had to do, and they just did not like it. Um, I don't know if they're bad batteries or what it is. But in the spring, we will set up again. We will hook this tank to a pressure washer and see what it actually takes to blow it up. But based on the wall thickness of 95 thousandths and the size and shape of the tank, if anybody knows how to do pressure vessel calculations well, I'd love to hear what the actual calculation is of a pressure vessel of that sh shape and size and wall thickness, what it would take to pop it. Um, but in the spring, we'll set up a pressure washer and blow it up. As far as using them as an air tank, I would say it's safe, but I still wouldn't recommend it. I would not do it myself. Now, because we didn't have an explosion like I had hoped for, I have six more pounds of exploding targets. So let's head out back and let's blow it all up in one shot. 
So we've been slowly working on this stump back here for years and there ain't much left of it. Right there is our six pounds of tannerite. Well, that was impressive. Let's see the aftermath here. There is dirt everywhere. There ain't much left of that stump. <laughs> and it threw, I've got old railroad ties out here that I need to get rid of, but uh, these were landscape timbers we took out. And it threw one of them quite a ways. That's about 15, 20 feet. Pretty cool. Well, that was really awesome. Uh, six pounds of, of tannerite. That just about took that stump out. I'm thinking 15 pounds next time. But next spring, we'll get the pressure washer out. We'll pressurize one of those propane tanks to see just what it really takes to blow it up. And uh, if you like this kind of content and you like the, the manual machine shop and sawmills and steam engines and railroad and all that cool fun stuff that every guy likes, check out the rest of my content. And until next time, Get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.